The Holocaust was always a subject matter which was of interest to me. I grew up in a small town in, in Kentucky and uh, I wouldn't say it was the most tolerant place in the world, uh, but it's something that's always been in the back of my mind. And then as I started to do my research, I spent three weeks in Eastern Europe traveling around to seven different camps and talking to survivors and talking to scholars. And I, you know, I came back on the plane and it just, you know, I, I sort of felt like, you know, what have you gotten yourself into? This, this is too, too difficult. And I was reading a book uh, and in it, it was talking about art, artistic representation of the Holocaust and art writing you know, poetry, prose, uh, and it said that uh, that some things are too too large to talk about, but nothing is too small. And to me, that meant while uh, in in a, a dance performance, you're never going to be able to wrestle all the issues with the Holocaust, but you can talk about one piece of it. That's why I've chosen to talk about one survivor's experience. And after having, having spent time with about 15 survivors over the past year, the, uh, the beauty from within them and the strength uh, is awe-inspiring. And uh, that is really what drives me to do this work. The goal is to educate about that historical moment, but it's also to look forward to the future and, and our present and, and what are we doing to uh, take whatever there might be possible to learn from that, that catastrophic event and apply it today. Understanding that the Holocaust is a singular event and nothing, nothing compares to that event. Um, but trying to, to, to draw something out of it which, which is relative to us today. Sometimes when you're dealing with a, a narrative project that you can't really explain, such as this, uh, it's easier for the costume designer, the scenic designer, to get an idea visually uh, as to what you're talking to as, a, as opposed to specifically what made this very different from other projects was just the amount of talking about the topic, not in a design-related way so much as really just what that means on a personal level or how do you go about even creating a piece that is memorializing people whose lives were lost and people who survived at the same time. Our process was more not about creating a lot of scenery or things that people will see per se, as about deciding what to show or what not to show. And so the, the design that people will see when they come is actually, it will look as if there was no design. And so the design is in fact just the process of making choices. The whole culture of design or architecture, the arts, post-World War II have all been affected by the Holocaust and in a lot of ways so much of um, contemporary architecture and postmodernism and minimalism are all grappling with that um, not being able to actually express something. When it was determined that we were going to do a ballet based upon the subject matter, uh, it was my uh, commitment that there had to not just be a ballet, that there had to be a large amount of educational opportunities dealing with it. That's why it's called Like the Holocaust and Humanity Project. It's not just a ballet. Art doesn't change the world. Uh, people change the world, and art might be uh, a catalyst for that discussion. That's our goal. And as it pertains to the artists, I want them also to realize that we're not just making a ballet. You know, we can go upstairs and we can put steps together, and that's, that's one thing, but that's not respectful of 
this particular subject matter. So as we step into the creative process, we all work together. I always work together with the artists. We all work together to create this work and it'll be more collaborative this time than, than normally. If art is relevant in our world, then we have to prove it, you know? And this is really the opportunity for the artists to step up, learn as much as they can uh, in this short period of time about a subject, and then see how that filters through the dance experience. You know, I can only work in my community. I can only do what I can do in my community. And other people in their communities have to do what they, they can do to make it a better place. So this is, this is our, our little corner of the world, and this is our contribution to make that better.